Welcome Raider fans. Welcome to another video for the Black and Silver Way. As you guys know, we defeated the Houston Texans 20 to 27 in Mexico, which was technically a Raider home game, and we sit at the top of the AFC West at 8 and 2. 8 and 2. Can you believe that we're 8 and 2? Last season and all the years before, we'd be 2 and 8. It'd be flipped right now. When I got done watching the game, the last video I posted, I went outside and I started yelling, hey, and two, I was definitely a little buzzed, but it was real. Like, I was not that drunk. I was just really excited. I've been happy. I mean, I don't even know what it feels like to be this good. And every week, we've just been doing these really gritty comeback wins and just been coming back and just taking that W. Like, we're not a team to be messed with. Everything that we have on paper and everything that we've been showing, we're definitely a playoff team potentially could make it to the Super Bowl. I'm not saying that we're going to go to the Super Bowl, but there's always that slight chance. We've been competing and competing, and we got a lot of young, hungry players. We don't even know who we are right now. We're just winning games, and we're showing up every single game day, and that's what counts. Let's get into some stats real briefly, and I'll kind of overview of what I thought about the game because the game wasn't so pretty. So Derek Carr, at the first part of the game, let's just start off like by overviewing what it was. They were coming off of a bye week. I didn't think the Raiders were going to come out so hot, and that's exactly what happened. They went to an international game with 7,000 feet elevation. I knew that the Raiders were going to be a little rusty. That's just me. I'm a Raider fan. I know my team. We watch this team game in and game out. We could show up rusty and finish at the end, or we could dominate the whole game. I felt like this is exactly what was going to happen. I thought we were going to start off slow in the beginning half, and then the second half, adjust and take what was ours and that's exactly what happened but it's okay as long as we get the w but in the first cup in the first half it wasn't so pretty Derek Carr was really rusty Michael Crabtree was dropped in balls left and right Seth Roberts was dropping catches and it just really didn't look too good and our running game was nothing like our running game was shit so uh I mean hats off to the Texans I know they have a top five defense and the run game they were stopping us I think we had overall 26 yards of rushing which is absolutely insane so uh uh, we obviously couldn't run the ball. When they went into the half, they adjusted. Derek Carr ends up throwing the game for 295 passing yards, 21 out of 31 attempts, three touchdowns with a passer rating of 117. It's not like Derek Carr had a really bad first half. It just seems like where he was throwing it, people were dropping balls like Crabtree and Seth Roberts. But the people that were coming in clutch for us today was Amari Cooper, Jalen Rashad, and... Latavius Murray uh, those break off to the right slant out to the sides from the running back being utilized as wide receivers Jameez Alawale getting a huge touchdown today for us as well it, what it seems is they're lining up right here in a formation where they break off and do a straight out route with you got uh, Jameez Alawale that's very fast Jalen Rashad that can actually catch the ball and is really good as well and Latavius Murray he's always being able to catch it and get some yards after the ball and you know what's really crazy about our offense that's really overlooked that I've been noticing a lot this year when they get it and they're open in the open field when the when whoever catches the ball the receivers or anybody down the field they are putting some really crucial blocks like that Amari Cooper touchdown to steal the game guys if you've seen Seth Roberts that was a great effort tackles him out completely the defender the cornerback and Cooper's able to cut back over that mess juke three people and take off for the end zone our wide receivers are blocking down the field they're trusting in one another and you know it's, it's really good to see, guys, because right there is crucial. They're clearing out a freaking path for our receivers to be successful down the field. Defensively, I think the best player on defense tonight was Malcolm Smith. Malcolm Smith got 10 tackles by Smith. So far, best in his whole 2016 season with the Raiders in this game. He also got an interception. Bruce Irvin was tackling everywhere as well. He gets 10 tackles and a sack tonight which was insane. Also, Khalil Mack was doing a really good job stopping the running game, and he also recorded a sack. They were actually succeeding here and there with, uh, I think his last name is Hopkins. That's like their go-to receiver for the Texans. They were putting him in some positions to get some yards on us, and here and there, they were converting and driving down the field. I was like, damn, they are getting rusty, and they are getting freaking lucky right now because our Raiders are rusty on defense right now, but here and there, Bruce Irvin, Malcolm Smith, and Khalil Mack were really, really really putting in some work today on the defense and also it was Sean Smith's first game being back after being injured for I think nearly three weeks David Amerson uh, he was also doing a good job at defending DJ Hayden had a couple of crucial uh, penalties that really bit us in the ass as well but you know what 
I have hated on. I'm gonna be a. I'm. This is a hundred percent right here. This is me, a hundred percent, guys. I have seen a lot of Raiders. I have seen a lot of Raiders in the last 13 years. Turnover. They come and go. They come and go. They stop trying. We just get bum ass people that have been on the Raiders in the last 13 years. Even though I completely 100% stand behind this, DJ Hayden should not have been a first round pick. I really respect the guy. I've grown to respect him. And the reason why is because I talked to my homie Raider Bandito. I think it was Bandito that told me about this. He hates that everybody talks shit about DJ Hayden because there's been a lot of freaking players in the past that come in as high picks or really high paid free agents and they don't do shit for us. This kid has put in hard work and he slowly improved over the years even though he still gets a lot of penalties and I do believe he wasn't supposed to be a first rounder. The kid wants to be here. The kid wants to be a Raider. I've talked a lot of shit about him because I've been angry of the performance and I've expected a lot from DJ Hayden and he hasn't been able to fulfill that. But I'm not going to hate on DJ Hayden anymore because I completely agree. I didn't see the bigger picture. That kid's always been a Raider and he does try really hard. And, you know, even though he's not the player we want him to be yet, hopefully he can get there soon. And I'm not going to hate on DJ Hayden anymore because I feel bad. I really should respect the fact that he is a Raider at heart and he really does want to be here. He he doesn't want to leave. So uh, I respect DJ Hayden. I just want to get that out also. And, uh, you know, Marquette King had a really good game punting as well. It was really weird to see Shane Leckler. Every time we play the Texans, I think we played them once since Shane Leckler has been on the on the Texans we did with uh I think it was Matt McGloin starting yeah it was Matt McGloin starting I think like two seasons back or three seasons back uh Shane Leckler when he left the Raiders that was pretty wild to see him man it's trippy like John Gruden was uh commentating the game and you see Janikowski and Shane Leckler they were all in the same building like you know like Super Bowl back in the day that was pretty crazy and last thing I wanted to touch up on is CJ Ward from the Broncos, Brandon Marshall taking shots at us on Twitter saying, oh, is it me or did that game seem st- staged? Everybody's giving a shit that Hopkins got that touchdown. That's bullshit. Like you can clearly see, I'm going to pull it up right now. You can clearly see guys that he stepped out and that was a good call. At first it looks like he didn't. It looks like he stayed in and I'm like, wow, they actually gave us that. But for the haters hating you could see clearly that his foot is halfway on the line right there. And it's funny that all these people are taking shots at us now that we're winning games and we're getting good fair calls, especially on the Raiders side. What about the tuck rule? What about all the penalties that we were called against Tampa when they really clearly had it out for us? There's a lot of fucking penalties that we've had over the last years, games that have been miscalled because where are the Raiders? And we're getting like a game called on our favor and they were clearly fair I believe they were fair they were a little hard critique but they were fair and usually they overlook those ones but they didn't this game and they were fair because he really did step out they really didn't get that fourth down conversion because his knee was down uh, on that last uh, fourth and one they went for I I just feel like the NFL and everybody could fuck off because they're thinking that we're cheating or it was rigged TJ Ward is complaining every single game on Twitter about us because he's sad that we are number one in the division and we're possibly going to knock his ass out out of the playoffs. So TJ Ward, another thing that I got to tell you is what about the Super Bowl? Cam Newton and the and the Panthers dominated all last year. It's Peyton Manning's last game in the NFL and he's going to go to the Super Bowl and the Panthers just don't do shit all game. Peyton Manning doesn't do shit all game. And the freaking Denver Broncos win and it ends Peyton Manning's historic career with a Super Bowl? Now that's some bullshit and that's something that's really fishy. Anyways, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be recording out the Carolina Panther game with my boy Al. Uh, thank you for everybody that have been sharing my videos and subscribed to the channel forever. I can't even thank you enough. This channel grows by like 10 or 15 subscribers a day because you guys share it. You enjoy the content. And I'm just glad that I'm still doing this for everybody. And we're having a good season. We're 8-2, and two, guys. Be happy. Like on this video. Share with your friends. And I will see you guys for the next video. Let's kick Carolina's ass. Peace.